up YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, it's your boy, Text Talks. Here with my girl, Shell. Say hi, Shell. Yo. We're here to talk about some some video games, some anime. Uh, what, what's the name of this podcast? What's the name of this podcast? The, the, Dead Air name. and Lag Spikes. What a name. What a name. The best name. Big name. <clears throat> anyway, yeah, so today we were going to talk about some uh, some of the show we both been watching. <laughs> She's been watching Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood, and then I started watching it too, and I think we're about at the same place, correct? Where are you? Uh, I just started part four. Okay, you're you're about six episodes ahead of me then. Nice. Um, uh, I kind of remember what happens after, um, and, and just just a warning, I guess, right off the bat, we're gonna be talking about like let, let's not kid ourselves. We're gonna be talking about the events that happen. Spoilers. So, so if you haven't watched uh, Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood, you should go watch it. It's on Netflix. It's a good show. When I watched it on Netflix back in the day, uh, for some reason they only had parts like one through th three. I think so. I had to like torrent the last two, but then now nowadays, now in the year 2018, you can watch it all on Netflix, and it's a pretty good show, and you should watch it. So, um, but that said, you know, well, we kind like, of talked about it a bit last week. Yeah, but we had, you, you guys had only seen like seven or eight episodes at that point, so it didn't really matter to, yeah, to give this warning. Yeah, that's uh, true. But anyway, we'll be talking about that, and we'll be talking about probably the Nintendo Direct that we just both watched like five minutes ago. Then we'll probably call it because it's late. But, Shell, tell me about Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood. You start in part four, what do you think? Alphonse is the best, and I certainly hope he gets his body back. Good call, good call. He's a pretty good kid. Um, I, like, I like that he doesn't freak out all the time about everything. Yeah. It's pretty, pretty solid plus check mark in the, in, the good, in the good stuff. And they make it out seem to be like, like such a bad thing that he can't sleep, but... Man, I would love Dude, it if I had stuck. a body that didn't need to sleep. Well, I guess in terms of productivity, maybe. But, like, what does Al actually have to do? Like, what <laughs> what yeah, hobbies does, does Al have, actually? What hobbies does anyone have in that show? Yeah, that's true. What do these people... Well, I guess, like, machine working's kind of a hobby profession I guess, thing. I guess they're all, I guess they're all technically, like... Per, like, this is the weird thing about this show, is that even though it's, like, very military-based, it's also, like... Everyone is supposedly, like, a scientist that has, like, research grants and stuff, and they're all apparently, like... Well, they're always alchemists. Doing research. Yeah, yeah, but, like, it's just weird because they're supposed to be, like, academic people. But, like, they're only... <laughs> you, only ever, you only ever research, like, reference research when it's convenient, and all of the research always, always culminates in, like, this one symbol that they, like, tattoo on their arm or something. <laughs> uh, but, which, is, which is fine. Like, the thing about Brotherhood to me is that, I don't know, the show is just so fast-paced and has such good pacing and such, like... It's so good at getting you invested in the events. Like, even if... Yeah, I think that's when the show is at its best. Like, I, I don't know. Like, where, where do we where do we start with this? What should we start? How, how should we start talking about this? Um, well, so we already we already established part one. They're looking for their bodies. Mm -hmm. They're fucking ninjas. They, so actually, they do gen, genjutsu. Because like I have it on subbed, and like I keep hearing gen, genjutsu. Which is like the same exact words that they used for Naruto. So it's it's the same. It's magic, okay? Japanese huh. magic. Genjutsu. I, I've never. I have, I didn't watch it subbed. I've only ever watched it dubbed. Actually, for some reason. Oh, um, what really? Yeah, I, I don't you know why. About the sub. I am. I am. I am. This is like the only show that I watched dubbed, and I'm not even claiming that it's better. See, the first time I, I guess the first time I watched it, for some reason, I just I, I switched from the sub to the dub after like eight episodes. I think it was because I was like just kind of uh, distracted at the time, and I wasn't able to focus that much, so I wasn't reading fast enough, so I just switched to the dub because it was easier. And then I got invested in the in the show, and by the time I got invested, I was watching it dubbed, and switching to the sub was so weird at that point. And now I'm watching it dubbed just because, now that I'm rewatching it, I'm watching it dubbed because I, it's just what I'm used to. You know, like, I hear someone talking, and if they're not talking with the voice I'm used to, it's just like, that's that's wrong. He's, that's, Mustang doesn't sound like that. <laughs> okay, doesn't sound like that. And honestly, the dub is pretty good. I, I, I'd say the dub is, like, very, very serviceable um, for the most part. I think that yeah, Edward does a great job. Alphonse does a great job. Mustang does an excellent job. Ling and, Ling and Greed do a great job. I think every, and especially Wrath, actually. He's the main guy that made me switch to the dub again. Because I, I think the voice, whoever cast, cast to do the English voice of Wrath sounds perfect. Like, this kind of quiet... 
just like I don't know, he sounds perfect to me. So hmm. it was really Wrath and Mustang that I was hearing, and I was like, this doesn't sound right. I have to go back to the dub. Well, I have no opinion because I have only dubbed. <laughs> what What do you uh, so like? Tell me about like what you think of the plot. Like what what kinds of uh, plot developments and stuff like that. What was your what what points of the show have had you like super hype so far? Super hype. Okay, so you told yeah. me that like I wouldn't be able to say who is Roy Mustang for too long, and that is true. Fucking Mustang's a badass. Mustang is a fucking badass, dude, and he, he like she proves it all at once, like in that one episode with when he kills Lust. Yep, that's exactly what I was gonna say. That's definitely a highlight of season two. Is uh, he's like the yeah. only one to kill, right? Uh, yeah. He's what the are only they one called? The, ever, okay, I, I, a homunculus. Homunculus. Yeah, it's a fake. That the homunculus is an actual term for like, <clears throat> to, like <clears throat> artificially made like mannequin person okay. human thing. Yeah, so they're like eidolons, basically. Yeah, yeah. I think those might be synonyms. I don't know. Maybe. <clears throat> okay, homunculus. Are you looking it up? No. Oh, I can look it up. But he's like the only one that has killed a homunculus. I think still to this point, other than like other homunculi. Mhm. Mm just fucking burn the shit out of her. Just killed her till she died. And not, not only that, just the setup to that point, like, they, like that whole uh, that whole gambit that he does in order to capture like one of them to begin not capture one or just what, what does he do? Let me let me think through this again. Uh, <clears throat> well, he has to like outplay everybody because he does he like realizes that there's something on the inside, right? So he doesn't know who to trust. Yeah, yeah. The so he yeah the what he does yeah and like they, they burning up, like, the body. Skin. Yeah, burning the body and everything and making everyone hate him just for a while. Like have, having Hawkeye like seeming like seeming to like be really mad at him and slam the door. I don't know. It's just yeah. Mustang is Mustang and Hawkeye. Those two characters together are kind of like for me at least like they're the real emotional crux of the show for me. Like I don't know. Those the relationship between those two is I can agree cool. with that. Yeah. Okay, well, because, like, the actual protagonist is still just a boy, you know? Mm -hmm. And so, like... I, and I like that. I like that they're kind of, like, bit characters in, like, a bigger story that they're a part of. Like, they've got their own goals, um, but they're not... They're never, like, the most important people in in the show, you know? Yeah, I, actually, and I feel like the adults are much more developed as characters throughout the story. <laughs> yeah, and they should be. They're older, right? They're adults. Yep. They've, they've had a past already. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and and there's definitely a contrast there's, that's intentional there, you know, between the adults and like the, the crazy fucking war that they were went through and and Edward Nel and Edward Edward Nelfons, you know. But that that was the point what I, that I was talking about, like that ep th those two episodes where uh, Mustang kind of shows his true colors. For when I was like, that was when I that was when I felt like I was into the show at that point. It, it wasn't until then that I was like super invested in everything. Yeah. But well at that point. Keep going. What well, are you gonna yeah, say? at that point, you see that there's a, like a conspiracy theory going on, you know, and it it just goes deeper from there. And I feel like that's where they really get your your attention. And it, it, it's not even that for me. Like it's it's also just the fact that at that point, it just seemed like I, I came to the realization that yeah, there's a lot of characters and like they're all fun to watch, and I like the dynamic between all of them. And they were it was just all it was the show kind of like coming together. Yeah, I just, yeah, yeah. I felt really, I felt actually invested in that point, in like the different characters. Uh, I don't know why. I'm still, I'm still kind of confused by that. Like, especially Edward himself. Like, I still, like, I was, I was thinking that at watching it a second time, I would realize the point where like I got won over because I, I still, but it was the same shit. Like, I hated how like much he freaks out at like being called a pipsqueak and stuff for so long. And then suddenly, like, a switch flipped, and I'm, like, suddenly enjoying it when that happens. Because he's and I don't know 12, why. right? I think he's 14. 14? I try not to think about the, their age, because it gets kind of weird. <laughs> well, they're supposed to be, like, super young. Yeah, I think they're 14. I think they did the the, 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 taboo? the transmutation when they were 12, yeah. Okay. I can look it up. Um, by the way, homunculus means a very small human or humanoid creature. Supposed microscopic, but not fully formed human being from which a fetus was formerly believed to develop. Okay. Okay, that makes Strength. sense. Does it? Yeah, because later on you see that the homunculus originated from an experiment where he was, okay. like, born of a flask. Okay, okay. <laughs> Here's the thing. I was, like, trying to, like, be coy about that in case you hadn't gotten to that point. 
<laughs> yeah, because that, that, that's like part four where that all gets revealed, right? No, Flashback. that's in part three. Oh, is it? I, I just started part four. Okay. Yeah, I can't remember when stuff happens. Like, I was actually really surprised that they uh, revealed that um, Wrath was, was a homunculus in season two or ep part two. Yeah. I thought that didn't happen until, like, the end of the show for some reason. Um, what? It yeah, I don't like... know. It's it just my memory is, was very wrong about certain things. Like, I was so surprised when Greed just died. Because Greed was, like, my favorite character. And I, I, all I remember is that Greed was, like, one of my favorite characters. And then, like, oh, he shit. He, they, just, they just dropped him in a cauldron and burned him. Yeah. Uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, you've seen where he comes back, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, and... I remember I asked you, like, have you met Greed yet? Have you met Ling yet? Like, I, re I, re I remembered that there was something between those two. And I liked both characters a lot, but I forgot. I didn't forget that they got merged together. I thought it happened at, like, the very end of the show for some reason. Yeah, I love Ling. I think Ling is one of my favorite characters in the whole show. Will Ling get his body back? Will he get his body back? Because right now, Greed is uh, using Ling's body. Well, Ling is in there. Yeah, but right? he doesn't really have control. Yeah, they got they got to work through some issues, but I I don't know. That's what's that's what's cool about greed as a character is that I feel like the show is making some statement about greed as a sin in general. <laughs> greed is good because I mean like every all of Ling's motivations are inherently extremely greedy to some extent. Yeah, he wants to be immortal, emperor of his people. Yeah, like those two those two have motivations that are not like mutually exclusive to one another. They could they can learn how to work together, get what they want. Hmm. That's all I'm going to say. <laughs> I've already said too much. Interesting. Yeah. All I'll say is that, you're okay, so you're in part four. You just started part four? Yep. From my, from my, what I remember, and keep in mind, like, I'm remembering things just straight up wrong in various ways right now. <laughs> the middle of part four to the end of part five is the climax of the show. Like, it just starts, and I think it's all one day or something. And it just keeps going. Like it's a, it's a really well done like build up to, to that. So I don't know. Buckle up for that. It's, it sounds like an fun. extreme case of anime time. What's up? So that sounds like an extreme case of anime time. Yeah, I think I watched all of it in like one day. So <laughs> have some time ready, because yeah, it all seems, it all feels like one big like epic kind of conclusion. Definitely one of the best endings to an anime, and. I don't know. For me, any sh t the ending to anything is super, super important. Like, if it doesn't have a good ending, I'll never watch it again. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, you don't want to leave with a bad taste in your mouth. And then you, you know, when it's a good ending, you want to go back and like see how everything really fit into into place. Yeah, and yeah, you can watch the things. whole. Exactly. You can watch the show with like a new level of respect and appreciate like everything building up to the ending a little differently, and and that makes the show a lot richer. Uh, Gurren Lagann is like that for me too. I think you're right. Like I, I was misremembering. Like a lot of what I remembered happening in in part two kind of just crossed over into part three. Cause there's, yeah. Because there's no real ending to part two. It's just kind of like I don't even know why they called that part three. Because. Well, let's see. They jump out of uh, Gluttony's stomach, or yeah, they're about no, to get out of Gluttony's that's... stomach. That's in part three. No, no, that's the thing. Like, it seems like a b bunch of crap is about to go down, and then part two ends. Like, he's in the process of escaping Gluttony's stomach, and Al is in the process of about to be meeting Father. And then the season crosses over to part three, and they and you have a recap episode followed by the episode where they actually meet the Father. I just watched this last night, so. Okay, so I think the significance is when you get to part three, they understand what's going on with the whole country. Mm -hmm. But now it's like, what are you going to do about it? Okay. Yeah. Because, you know, when they're inside the belly of Gluttony, they, you know, he sees the the piece of marble from the ruins that he was contemplating earlier in the season. He's like, oh, you know, I can't tell exactly what this transmutation is because I can't tell, you know, what the top thing was. But, you know, he sees inside Gluttony, and then, you know, he has the epiphany, and then it all comes together. He realizes the insidious truth and then from there, they have to, like, chase after the answers. Right. Yeah, yeah, I mean, that sounds right. I don't I don't really feel like the division between the parts matters too much overall, though. Like, the whole show feels very consistent. Yeah, it does. It really does. Do you have any, uh, do you have any criticisms or complaints about the show? No, not really. I'm really enjoying it. It's, uh, it's a fun show to watch. Like, 
You know, you get that's that. That's the thing. It's very it's binge worthy. Yeah. That's the thing about Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood is it's just very, very fun. No matter, like, I have a couple criticisms of it myself that I was maybe going to bring up, but, like, overall, like, yeah, it's just a very enjoyable experience. It's got action, it's got drama, it's got a lot of melodrama. That's one of the issues I have with it. Especially in the beginning. Like, before you're really invested in the characters, it just always seems like every episode it's just like, oh, these characters are depressed and trying really hard. And I'm just like, okay, I don't care yet, though. Well, the thing Especially, is, their life is shit, but they totally, you know... Made their own bed, now they have to lie in it. Is, is their life shit? They're like celebrities. Yeah, well... He doesn't have a body, man. That's pretty shit. <laughs> you were just saying you would have liked it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's true. No, I mean, it's, it's, it's not a matter of, like, whether or not their lives are actually shit. It's a matter of, like, how invested am I in them to care about, like, this kind of super emotional scene that they're going through at the end of an episode, like, that's been 20 minutes long. Uh, I think that the second episode was really good. The one where they, like, flashback to the, uh, to the actual events where, like, they, they did the summoning or did the, the transmutation. Mm -hmm. I thought that they handled that episode really well. I'm talking about, like, I don't know, I think, I think the episode, there's a part in part one where they, like, Ed and Al first have an encounter with Scar, fight him a little bit. Yeah. And then at the ending of that episode, they're just kind of like sitting around and it's the, the music is super emotional and they're just like, it's just a bunch of melodrama. Like they're just talking about, I don't know, how dramatic everything is. And it's just like, I get it. I don't, I mean, I don't get it. It's, I'm not, I don't, eh. <laughs> I feel like the point of introducing Scar at that point in time was to show that just by being state alchemists, by taking on this role, they have taken on so many more enemies. Yeah, yeah, no, I, I, I totally think that they should have introduced Scar that early. That's not, that's not what I'm talking about. I'm just talking about, like, the very end of the episode where it's, like, a sunset and it's just Ed and Al talking to each other. Yeah, exactly. They're just saying, like, just that exactly by, you know, okay, we... Okay, yeah. They became he or... Ed became a state alchemist in order to help them find their bodies, but it caused so many more problems for them that they didn't even imagine. Yeah, even the way you just said that, like, God, it caused so many problems, and I'm just... Uh, yeah, you don't need to lay it on so thick, I guess, where I'm coming <laughs> from. Like, you can do that, but you got to do it later on when, when, when you're invested. But that's not my biggest problem with the show. I think, actually, my biggest problem with the show, which is kind of strange because I don't think I noticed this the first time, is the, at least in part two, ridiculous amount of convenience that's being used a lot of the time. Oh, yeah, you... there is, there is. Okay, I'm glad you noticed that. I was about, I was hoping that you wouldn't be like, what the fuck are you talking about? Like, No, they, they, <laughs> you've watched Red Letter Media, right? Yeah, yeah, I've, I've, yeah, I love those guys. <laughs> um, Mr. Plinkett's reviews? Yeah, of course. They, they read, Wait, oh, is, that they read, the, is that the script? Yeah, <laughs> there, there's scripts left all over the fucking tunnel system. Dude, I yeah, swear. there was actually <laughs> yeah the tunnel system, dude. It's just the streets. It's just the street layout. It's like it's like the script is like it's just like the the person that wrote the show, like put a bunch of arrows down in the alleyways for the <laughs> characters to follow, and nobody's talking about it. Yeah, like how the fuck? How how can we? Like there's so many little things. Like for example, like. I think the worst, the biggest offense in the whole show to me, as far as this goes some, so far, is when uh, uh, Edward is taken to Xerxes to, like, find out what happened to uh, the girl that got framed. And he gets left behind in Xerxes, and then he encounters um, the Ishvalan guys, right? And the, uh, the elder starts talking to him, and she starts talking about these two doctors, and Edward's just like, Oh my god, were their names Rockbell? And I'm first of all, I'm like, why would you even like assume that? There's like <laughs> tens of thousands of people in this country. Like what? Like and then she's just like, yes. And I'm just like, oh my fuck, come on. Like, yeah. the, it's not that it wasn't just that it was convenient that that let that happen. It's that Edward just like assumed <laughs> that that just because that there were a couple and doctors and had like blonde hair and blue eyes. That they must be Winry's parents, and I'm just like, Jesus Christ. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Definitely. But I feel like you could kind of play a drinking game based on, like, how many times, like, one character just randomly walks into another character at a perfect moment in an alleyway. Like, <laughs> yeah. Like, let, let's, count, let's count this up. Let's count this up. So, 
first one that comes to mind, obviously, is, is Edward encountering Mustang right after he supposedly burns the girl. Yep. Uh, another one that comes to mind is Winry randomly encountering um, uh, Edward and Nell, Ed Edward and Nell uh, fighting Scar. Yep, yeah, that, that's the... At the exact moment when, like, Scar said something along the lines of, of like, giving away that he did murder her parents. Yep. Like, where the hell uh, did she come from? Wasn't yeah. she in, like, a different city? <laughs> no, no, she was, she was still in the same city at the time. But, like, there was no reason for her to leave her hotel room. Like, yeah. She left her hotel room like five minutes before she encountered them in the scene, so I can see why you'd be surprised by that. <laughs> but the, they, they use it so well, though, is the thing. I can't really get too angry at it, because, like, for example, the the scene when, or not the scene, the whole episode where um, they're trying to capture uh, Gluttony, I guess it's right after what I just said, right? It, it's like the episode right after the, the fight with Scar, or like kind of during the fight with Scar. Just when I think that shows at its best when like all the different characters are like involved in different ways in various different parts of the area and they're all intersecting because mm -hmm. you got like Ling and like her his his girl like doing their thing in that building and then Ling jumps out of the out of the sewers and like shoves a grenade and gluttony's throat and it's like okay this is cool this is like a lot of it's 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 a uh, I don't know chaotic but in like a very well-directed way. Oh, do you know who else had the script? Number freaking 66. That guy is just, like, master of the script. 66? Yeah, he's the other armor dude that was, like, evil. Oh! Yeah, okay, what about him? What? A, wait, 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 which armor dude? There were two. Well, so there's the guy that they, like, killed right away. He doesn't have, like, any screen time. But then there's 66 who just kind of, like, tags along for some reason. The butcher guy? The, yeah, yeah. The... The one that randomly becomes a good guy for no reason. Yeah, exactly. Like, like that's what I'm saying. Like, it. he just like read the script. They they needed you know, him there for some reason. I was okay with that. I don't know why. I shouldn't have been. There's a lot of things that I like. I like excuse that show for just because it's fun. And that that is character really is definitely fun. one of those things because it's like okay. And they they just happen upon his body. They I don't think they ever explained that. Wait, what? Okay, hold on. How did? Yeah, actually, okay. So they fight him. At the at, labor at the fifth laboratory, and then how does he actually show up again? What actually so, like, gets him involved? Alphonse kills him or incapacitates him, but doesn't kill him. But then they have like this him as prisoner, but he's like too strong to really like keep, and so he just like tags along, and then for some reason yeah. they start fighting his body, and he's like, oh shit, that's my body because I read the script. I mean, he would know if it's his own body. Well, like, he would know if it was his own body, but what was his body doing there? Like, where, like, isn't it implied that Alphonse doesn't have access to his body because it was, like, sacrificed? No, no, yeah, like, but that was, a, okay, this this one, actually, I can defend. I don't know why, but I can. The, the, that guy was an experiment at the Fifth Laboratory where they were separating souls from bodies. Yes. But they weren't, like, like, Alphonse lost his body in an equivalent exchange, like he traded his body for knowledge, but um, this is that th th there's no equivalent, there's no exchange that given. Like he just took a soul out of a body and put it in a suit of armor because why not? And it was never really said what happened to the body. Like I think it was implied that the bodies were like disposed of, but I mean, it made sense that the homunculus, or it, like it not made sense, but it was conceivable that the homunculus would still have the body and be using it for something. And I think I think what they did was they like put a rat's like soul inside of it or something like that. Isn't that what they say? Like some kind of beast. But and I think there was like more of them in cages too, in the same place. Oh, perhaps maybe right? I missed something. But just seems awfully get. convenient that that guy's body was like the one thing that was attacking them. You know. I th think they knew what they were sending when they sent it, though. I think they knew that it was it was the it was Barry the butcher or whatever that was like causing the trouble. And I'm not sure why that... But he was supposed to just be their prisoner. Like, they didn't know that he was going to be out and about. Yeah, I'll tell you what's weird is that they thought that that guy was a... That that, like, random trained, like, animal person was going to be able to, like, take care of the issue <laughs> yeah. at all. Exactly, that's what like, I'm talking about. They it's had like, no what trouble, that... like, incapacitating it and then chasing it to the exact place where they wouldn't want to be discovered. So, <laughs> yeah, that that part's a little, a little tough to swallow. And then after that, also, like, why did the body try to, like, kill itself again? 
Like what? I think. Well, I think that was kind of implied that the like the body was like trying to reconnect with the soul, but too inept to do so and ended up killing itself. Really? Because I interpreted it differently. I mean, I didn't interpret it differently. I didn't know how to interpret it. It seemed like he was very deliberately trying to scratch out the, the engraving. Like, he wanted to die. I don't understand how it would have even understood what was going on, let alone, like, how to, like, die or anything. Because isn't it, like, an animal thing inside of it? Like, what? Like, does it understand that that suit of armor has its soul? Or something? Or something. All right, so Speaking of convenience, let's talk about Ling real fast. Okay. Like they just found him in an alleyway, like asleep. That's how that's how that character got introduced. Yep. Just wanted to point that out. <laughs> what, what were you gonna say? <laughs> well, that, okay, that's something that they haven't really addressed. They're like, oh, he's collapsed again. Like, is he diabetic? Does he is he going through like blood sugar episodes? And that. I think he just eats a lot and passes out. Is that what that is? I I think yeah I think he's just yeah no actually that, that, no that is it that's a character trait like he gets he eats a shitload and if he gets too hungry he just gives up on life. He did it inside a gluttony's stomach. Remember, they had to eat a shoe just to keep him alive or to keep him like not from doing that. Like he's a super determined person until he gets hungry and then he just stops giving a shit. Not exactly like the most you know, not stupid character trait of all time, but, uh, it is a character trait. And that's how he ends up getting kidnapped, or gets caught up in immigration or whatever, because he's all passed oh, yeah. out on the side of the road begging for food. <laughs> Ling is so cool. I want him to be my king. He, he's the best, he's the best eyes closed anime character of all time, I would say, overall. You know how animes tend to have that one character who never opens their eyes? Yep. Ling's definitely the best one of those. The Ishvalan War of Extermination, they sold that about as well as they possibly could have. And you know, I really liked the, uh, like, for lack of a better word, the cinematography for that episode. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, it's good. Cause, like, I agree. I, I know what you're talking about. It's, it's just, uh, it's, you know, it's a cartoon. It's drawn. They didn't need to add that extra, like, layer of, like, old-timiness to the you know, the feel of the episode, but they did, and it added a lot It wasn't to just it. the old timiness, it was, like, the swap of color pal palette to, like, be a little more, like, barren and just, like, orange and, like... Oh, yeah, it, it felt like, like you were watching it off of a really old tape. Yeah, I guess so. I so, didn't I didn't catch that, really, but... My, I'm the gonna actually... old timiness, I mean, is that, like, sepia tone... Sepia, yeah, I was actually looking for that word when, we were, when you were just talking. Yeah, sepia tone, yeah. The, the... Yeah, I actually can kind of see it. It's just kind of like bleached out. Yep. All the colors are kind of just like bleached out. And so I don't know. I I enjoyed that episode because it felt like a a documentary on the the world that I've been invested in. It's best flashback you know, episode ever. But yeah, pretty good show. Um, I'm excited to see what you think of the uh, the finale, which you're pretty much entering right now. Yeah. Um... Have you met Pride yet? Yes, I have met Pride <laughs> twice. Because, like, well... You know who he is, right? Yeah. I don't remember exactly how he's revealed. It's the Fuhrer's son. Okay, okay. At first really you get to see that he's a homunculus, and then later you see Pride in the tunnels. Okay. I don't know. The, yeah, Pride, Pride is, like, the most fucked up of all of them, I think, if I remember correctly. Like, I remember... I, I forgot about the kid completely. And when I first saw the kid in, like, the 7th or 8th episode or something, I just started laughing uncontrollably. I was just like, this fucking kid. Oh, man. He's... That kid's a douche. He's full of pride. Yeah. Who's your, who's your favorite, uh, who's your favorite Sin character? I mean, my favorite's definitely Greed, but he almost doesn't count. I don't know, I don't... As far as, like, actual villains go, I think my, my, I might have to be Envy. Shape shifters are cool. Yeah, and he's just a good villain. Like he's uh I think that's another thing that the bro that the Brotherhood is really really good at in general is it's really good at putting its characters in situations where they have to interact and cooperate with like the bad like guys. characters that you wouldn't ha wouldn't expect to have to cooperate like end up talking to each other and cooperating a lot. Like it was a it was a smart and fun play to have, you know, Envy down inside of Gluttony's stomach with with Ed and and uh Ling, you know, like, though, yeah. having forcing those three to cooperate is interesting. Then at the same time, having 
Ed and Al, or, uh, or Al and Glenn and Heath themselves talking and stuff and being friendly is, is interesting too. Like, yeah, the well, show's really good at... And later, they need Scar's help to decipher the yeah. notes. Yeah, the this, this show's really good, I think, at like coming up with believable situations to put the characters in where they don't have to fight and they can just kind of like talk and stuff. It, it makes the show feel a lot uh, a lot different than the typical kind of like fight fight me anime, fight me shonen anime. Yeah, I was thinking about that because a lot of anime just comes to just punch them until they die, right? Yeah, and, and Brotherhood is literally almost never like that. Yeah, I mean, it's the same villains the whole time pretty much. It's just kind of a back, it's not even back and forth, it's just kind of a, like, it's not, the fights never feel pointless somehow, but there's never, like, a winner. I think there's usually a, a clear winner. Well, I guess they captured Gluttony that, that one time. They, uh, they captured Gluttony, they killed Lust, the Fuhrer killed okay, Greed. They, they did kill Lust, true. Yeah, okay, never mind, everything I'm saying, yeah, you're right. You're right. I don't know. I mean, I'm trying to say something, though, and I'm not quite sure. I guess Scar just kind of seems to, like, get away constantly. That's his thing. Scar's yeah, Scar, uh, Scar's probably, I think, overall, like, the weakest main character of the whole show. He's not, he's not bad, but when I think back to, like, all the characters, I, I think about all of them fondly, and then I think about Scar, and I'm just like, yeah, he was there. <laughs> he was angry. Like, I get it. Like, I mean, his story is really sad, and it's kind of similar to Edward and Alphonse, and just made all these bad decisions. He's all mad about shit, but he's still all right, I, I, I guess. You know, it's fine. If Winnie forgives him, we forgive him. I can't remember whether she does or doesn't. She doesn't forgive his wantonness. Wantonness. That's, that's what the sub says. I actually wanted to look that up. Okay, there's lots of different definitions of wanton. Uh, the first one is merciless and inhumane. Uh, I see deliberate and unprovoked. I'm pretty sure that's what she's talking about. Being without check or limitation. Yeah. Lewd. Um, seem lewd. <laughs> oh, cool. I didn't know Google did this now. You can, like, press the button and now it's, like, origin. It comes from the Middle English word wan, which means badly. The Old English word togen, which means trained. Leading to the Middle English, like, combination wantoen, rebellious, lacking discipline. Then it's combined with the two English words team and tau to create want. The real question is, where is Ed's arm and leg? Well, you, you've seen Ed's arm and leg. You have? Yes. When? So, when he goes back through... Yeah, I think it is when he initially goes back through at the very end of season two. You see, like, God again. And instead of just being a blurry outline, he has, like, a filled-in arm and leg. No way. Yes. Holy shit. Okay, I'm, I'm going to look that up right now. I'm going to, I have Netflix on. I'm going to see if you're right. Oh my god, you're right. He's right there. I'm seeing it. I can't believe I missed that. The right, the arm and the leg are right there. Oh yeah, that was something I wanted to mention. I really appreciate that when he like punches through the door. Yeah, yeah, that's a good scene. To talk to Alphonse's body, he yeah. punches right through the word Adane. Which is like, the, it's a word for God, but it's like specifically like the master. And so he's huh. just like punching God in the face, basically. And like, you know. That's cool as shit. Rebelling. Yeah, yeah, there's, that, that kind of symbolism always goes over my head and I feel a little bad about it, but I don't really even know what to look up. Yeah, oh yeah. That's just something that caught my eye because Adani, Abaddon, and Dota. I, I think I've looked up the lore for like every Dota hero. I thought you said Adonai. Well, like, so Adonai is, like, the original, like, Hebrew or whatever, but okay, yeah. it's developed into Adani and Abaddon. Okay. Wait, Abaddon is Adonai? That's the same, those are the same thing? Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's the guardian of the mist. Huh. Whoa. Whoa. Whoa, dude. Too deep for me. I mean, they have Zeus. Why not Adonai? I just didn't know Adane was, like, a, per a specific, like, god. I thought it was, like, a singular god or something. I don't know. Well, I don't know. With those old-timey words, it's kind of hard to say. It's semantics, you know? Sure. Yeah, <laughs> I see the word Abaddon used in a lot of video games, and I just don't know. I never really looked up like, what its significance was. I just realized that there's a lot of things that I pick up on Isaac, like, eventually after reading enough. Like, I just realized 
there's a character in that game named Keeper, who um, is a corpse, and instead of health, he has two coins, and he has nice. to like pick up coins again. And apparently, it's like a reference to like the the, Greek the this, mythology like, sticks. Yeah, the Greek ceremony where they like yeah, exactly. That's what it is. Yeah, that's that's kind of cool. Because there's another character named the Lost who's a ghost and starts with one coin, like implying that they sent him one way, but he never came back. Like they never. Well, like they said, they like. Huh. I guess they send the body down the river sticks to like have so that the soul can leave, and then eventually the, and then the and then they bring the co the corpse back, right? But there's no corpse for the ghost, so he only has one coin because it was only went one way. It's it kind of I kind of I think it speaks volumes to the fact that like, I'm I've put like 300 hours into that game at this point. I'm still picking up on those those references. You probably do it much quicker because you actually know. That's shit. I have to admit, it actually looks pretty interesting. It's it's on yeah, my it's... someday list. There's a lot of games that I want to play, but mostly just Hearthstone right now. I I know where you're coming from. Sometimes, well, you, I, I don't know. I I go through phases in life where like. I I feel like I, I'm always either playing like tons of different video games like one at a time, or watch. But if I'm doing that, like I have a really hard time like sitting down to watch a new anime. Let's say I feel like you're on an anime anime f friend right now so you, one game is probably more than enough for you yeah pretty much although i do have an itch to play dota but oh artifact that's something we need to talk about next week because they're doing press conferences finally over the next two days for artifact and i'm so excited artifact. to learn more and we will talk about that next week and what's artifact what's artifact are you fucking what's artifact, kidding me? artifact fucking is the dota 2 card game what? That yeah, this is like the reason why I'm playing Hearthstone. You know that, right? Is because no. there's a Dota 2 Hearth or there's a Dota 2 card game coming out. What the shit? We'll have a one million dollar tournament. Dota card game. What the fuck is this shit? Oh my god, am I gonna have to get into card games? Yes, you're gonna have to get into card games. And, like, uh, so I haven't it. heard too much about it yet. Because, like I said, this is, like, breaking fucking news. But what I've heard is that Richard Garfield is helping Valve create this. Who's Richard Garfield? That he, guy sounds like a name I should know. He made Magic the Gathering. Oh. Dude, yeah. that's what's great about Valve, is Valve actually goes out and seeks out the guys that know what the fuck they're doing. Like... Mm -hmm. Yeah, and he's he's made other board games. Actually, I have a couple of his board games too. Like, and that guy's uh, given really interesting lectures on like the role that luck should play in like competition and stuff. That guy knows. That guy, that guy's legit. He's super guy legit. Magic. Valve's legit. Dota's legit. Yeah, I, and all these things are coming together into one of my favorite fucking mediums, card games. No, see, that's the thing. Like, a lot of people just love fucking Blizzard and just suck Blizzard's dick, and I, I don't have a problem with them. You're welcome to suck Blizzard's dick if you want. You can suck anyone's dick that you want. It's a free country. But, like, I don't know. Bl Blizzard making a card game, it's not just a good game because Blizzard made it. Like, I don't typically like Blizzard's, I guess, philosophy when it comes to making games. Like, I'm not convinced that Hearthstone is going to be good because of Blizzard. And, in fact, and if anything, I'm kind of turned away from it because it's Blizzard because I know how they tend to balance their games. And like Yeah, that's true. That's but, probably my but, biggest complaint about Hearthstone. It doesn't really seem very well balanced. But like if Valve, the guys that make fucking Dota, are making a card game, you just know it's gonna have like a level of complexity that is borderline impenetrable in the best way. Right? Like Yep. Like it's gonna be it's gonna be over the top in like its its extremeness and that's gonna be really fun. It's always like that's the best thing about Dota, learning it and just like seeing people, seeing a character's skills and just being like, what the fuck? This is in the game? There's a character that just resets all of his cooldowns instantly? Like, okay, I guess. Um, yeah, that, that's going to be cool. I, I will have to give this game a shot. Let me know. Keep me updated on it. Well, I want to talk about it next week because okay. a lot of the updates are just coming out right now over the next couple of days. And I played another tabletop card game that I wanted to talk about on air, and they seemed kind of related, so we'll do them both next week or next time. So wait, is Artifact playable or or what? Like, how what what's available to think about this game yet? Um, so it's in closed alpha right now. Okay. 
So there are people who have access to it. Like I know Day9 has played it, does play it, is in love so with it. So I can it. get on Twitch and watch it? No, you cannot. Oh. Okay. So like it's very close can I get on right YouTube now. And watch it? No. Oh, okay. That's really close. Yes. That's like du that's like double close, dude. And but no, over the next <laughs> couple of days they're gonna release more and more. So I'm I'm super stoked. I'm kind of stoked too. I I am more stoked than I would ever expect to be about a card game. So, let's talk about the Nintendo Direct. Okay. Bunch of ports, like Eric said, or yelled. Ports, ports, true. ports, 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 ports. Sports, dude. Mario sports, tennis. I, I barely paid any attention to that to that demonstration. Yeah, neither did I. But a, <laughs> I mean, I, I Mario tennis is fine. I'll probably never be able. I'll probably never play it again because, you know, none of my friends are gonna buy it. Like Mario tennis is one of those things where I would play it. I would I would have fun playing it, if I was like put in front of it. Like if someone sat me down in front of it and said, "We're playing Mario fucking tennis," mm -hmm. be like, "Yeah, all right." But I'm not gonna say, "Let's play Mario tennis." Pretty much. Uh, well, like, so I like games because they're the great equalizer for me. I have a physical disability that prevents me from being competitive in other ways. I don't need right. to be fucking playing Mario Tennis. <laughs> I don't need Tennis <laughs> Elbow on top of all my other issues. I want to play Wait, games. Wait, do you have to swing it? Like, physically? I don't think you have to, but it's always going to be an option. Yeah, Nintendo loves their, their waggles and stuff. Exactly, and sometimes they're... Analog controls are shit. Like they are in arms. I fucking hate using the Joy Cons for arms. I just want to use the buttons. Cause really, well, like reasons I have already explained. No, like, I mean I just I mean I didn't. I don't know anything about arms. Oh well, like yeah, you have to like punch, and do okay. stuff. And right. I'm not about that lifestyle. I want to push buttons. <laughs> and the, does the, uh, the mapping does the for pro the controller buttons. Work? Yeah, the the pro controller works great and it's very comfortable, but. The mapping of the buttons sucks, and there's no way for oh. you to reroute them, which is stupid. Like, what what game can you not reroute, you know, reroute your buttons? Yeah, Nintendo really sucks at giving you settings options in general. Like, I've always hated that about them. Yeah, there's an absurd lack of settings in almost all their games. Okay, so did you see the the fucking uh, Detective Pikachu? You gotta watch it with sound. You gotta, you gotta hear why? Pikachu talk. Why? Yeah, I was just, I was about to say, why does Pikachu sound like he's forty and's been smoking for fifty years? It's, I don't know, <laughs> but I'm okay with it. It's amazing. <laughs> Who the fuck allowed for this? <laughs> like, <laughs> what the fuck, Nintendo? <laughs> Who greenlit this? Dude, Nintendo. If if Detective Pikachu isn't in the next Smash game, I'm gonna like. I'm going to be mad. Oh, this is will. already my favorite new Nintendo character. <laughs> He's definitely going to be in Nintendo Switch Super Smash Brothers. Oh my god. That was also uh, revealed in today's Direct. Yeah, I, I mean, I guess it's a new Smash. I guess it's a brand new Smash. I, I feel like it's super early to have a new Smash game come out. Those games are usually spaced apart by a long time. But I feel it like sense. it needs it. It, yeah. ma it makes a lot of sense. The Switch is the Nintendo's hot new thing. It's actually successful. People have Switches. Nobody's gonna buy Smash 4 for their Wii U. Right. I wonder if it's Sakura directing it this time. I kind of, I kind of, I kind of hope it isn't. I kind of really hope it isn't. That sounds. I, I feel really weird saying that. I wonder how other people feel about it. Yeah, it started with like Inklings. What? Well, I mean, that's the obvious one. Everybody knew that the squi the Inklings would be in the next Smash game. Like they're the they're the biggest new Nintendo franchise. Yeah. Like they are a welcome addition to like the Nintendo pantheon of like Nintendo characters. Like they they deserve it more than anybody. Yeah, they do. Um, they're they're cool. They're awesome designs. They look fucking cool. They've got all sorts of great attacks that are possible. Um, yeah, that's true. Yeah. So many attacks. Oh my gosh, there's so many subs and specials and Oh lord. Just yeah, and if they actually do like the custom specials correctly in this game, like they they were supposed to in uh, Smash Four, um, you'll probably be able to like actually swap out grenades. Like may maybe the side B is a grenade, and you can swap swap between like all three types of grenades. Like 
that'd be cool as shit. And I bet I bet that's gonna be the thing, honestly. Oh man. They'll probably put a lot of work into the the uh What I really hope they do more of though in the new Smash is um I hope they work more on fixing the old characters or updating the old characters than they, they do in, like, introducing new ones. Because, like, certain characters... Like, Ganondorf is still a fucking clone of Captain Falcon. <laughs> like, he's still... Like, why? He's still Falcon he's, he's, kicks. Like, they did that in, in Melee because they ran out of time. But it's there's no excuse anymore. He need They should... He can't... He should have, like, his moves. He sh there's definitely enough... Zelda lore to like get, make him a real character, and they just haven't done it. Yeah, that's true. Mario needs an update. Mario is gonna get an update. I hope that Mario has attacks that involve Cappy. He already his down B is his the um uh the the flood, which is cool. Like he they need to keep updating Mario with what with his new stuff. I think Samus deserves an update. I think I don't know what they're gonna do with Link. Link maybe is the is the most confusing one because. Like, Breath of the Wild Link is a way different ki Link than the other Link, right? Yeah, he needs an update too, then. I wonder, I, I don't know if he needs an update. I feel like he might just, they might just need two Links. <laughs> well, they, because... they've done that before with, like, Toon Link, Young Link, whatever. Yeah, Toon Link was always just a clone of Link, though. I, 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 I yeah, I think that you need, like, some, some, like, some, like, combination, some, like, merged... Toon Link regular Link character that uses the regular shit like boomerangs and bombs and where's the actual tunic and stuff and then you need a Breath of the Wild Link that's just like who's who has 12 different costumes that are all the different costumes from the game and and just like has a whole bunch of attacks that involve using the Sheikah Slate. Like you could make an entire move set that just involves the Sheikah Slate, right? Oh, and, yeah. and the hang glider and the uh and a bunch of, you know, just all the unique stuff. I wonder what they're going to do with Link. Pokemon. They always had a new Pokemon. Yeah. Yeah. Well, one of the things about that I like about, like, that the, I don't think anybody's noticed about Smash and Pokemon is they, the, when they add a new Pokemon in Smash, they're always, they always make sure that it's a new type. Like, you have a lot of type representation in Pokemon. You have a normal type, you have an electric type, you have a fire type. Uh, you, it's going to be Decidueye. What the fuck am I talking about? It's going to be Decidueye that's going to be added. Yeah. The other reason I think I'm right is because he's a grass ghost type. Neither of which have representation in the Smash games yet. Oh, do you know who else is might be there? The who? Pikachu clone weird thing. What is it called? The haunted hmm. Pikachu looking thing? Oh, Mimikyu? Mimikyu. I can see that. I can see that. Is, isn't Mimikyu a great name? Like. Yes. <laughs> yes, it is. That, that's the thing about the new Pokemon Sun and Moon. Like... All of the new Pokemon designs are, ex are fucking top notch. They're all fucking great. I love the new Pokemon designs. They're actually inspired. They're like, so when there's it, some really cool ones. One of the reasons why I didn't get Sun and Moon was because it only came out on the DS, right? Yeah. And I'm not about that lifestyle anymore. It's yeah. There's pr you know, honestly, you can wait around. There's probably going to be a Switch remake sometime soon. Well, and like I don't know, Pokemon's always been like, yeah, I'll I'll catch the next iteration. I think that Sun and Moon is actually worth worth your time. I've skipped iterations of Pokemon before. I skipped Black and White completely, um, and Diamond and Pearl I think are trash. Um, but I think Sun and Moon is legitimately the best Pokemon game since Red and Blue. They really like pulled out all the stops for it, and I think that you can definitely rely on there being a Switch remake because I'm pre I, I think. That the engine that Sun and Moon were make made, were made on was an engine that had graphics capabilities that were way 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 above um, what the actual like DS version looked like because I've seen YouTube videos where they've like emulated it and then turned up the graphics settings and made it look like an actual Switch game. So I know this sounds super stupid, but I also would would totally buy Sushi Striker. It just seems like a you know generic puzzle match em up game that I would love to lose millions of hours on. Yeah, God damn it, like... Oh, whatever. No oh, problem. man. Kirby. I have to buy the new Kirby. Because Kirby is my friend. <clears throat> and this one has gooey. I was pleasantly just surprised to see that the fractured butthole is coming to the Switch. Yeah, I mean... I never really played the first one, but it looks like a fun RPG. I played the first one, and it was okay. 
And I know they tried to really like pull out the stops for the second one. I was just surprised because you don't really see a lot of like third party stuff imported on the Switch, but it, you're starting to see that more and more. So I'm that makes me happy. Splatoon. Yeah, of course I wanted to wanted... talk about that last. Yeah. Splatoon. Octo expansion. Splatoon. I love me Splatoon. The Squid Lord compels me. What? What do you think about this DLC? Uh, it looks pretty cool. It looks really entertaining. I feel like it will be worth it. I know a lot of people have wanted Octolings for a really long time. And I'm glad that, you know, the Nintendo is at least a little bit willing to listen to their community. Octolings are like the bad guys, right? Yes. Well, they were the bad guys in the first one. Actually, were oh, they okay. the bad guys in the second one? Yeah. Yeah, they are the bad guys in the second one. DJ Octivo. Yeah, that guy's cool. He's like fucking amazing. <laughs> DJ Octavio. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's all single player, right? Did they say it was anything in multiplayer? They well, were, they were there. You can play as an Octoling in multiplayer if you get this oh. expansion. Okay, I saw two things in that trailer that caught my eye. One of them was a jetpack. And one of them was like a ball that you could get in and roll around in. You saw those, right? Uh, well, they, they kind of, what you just described just sounds like specials that are already in the game. God, I love the music for Splatoon. Dude, this tra the music in this trailer is so fucking good, isn't it? Yes. Uh, just all the Splatoon music's just so fucking good. All Splatoon music is good, but this trailer music was, like, especially good. I like the director guy that shows up at the end, though. He's like, yo, what up, everyone? Squid Research Lab here. He's like, you're having fun. I can appreciate that. They do those Squid Research Lab updates pretty often. I... Yeah, I'm sure they do, but it's still, it's fun. Like, it's it fun to fun. see that the developers are having fun. Yeah, it is, it is. It looks like the single player modes are using these specials, though, like, as part of the level. Like, yeah, they do. That ball. They, they like, did that the in the first thing. one, too. And, well, in but... the first game and the second game, there's little, like, items that you can pick up that, like, charge your special, basically. Yeah, but in the second game, at least, I never played the first one. But in the second one, it didn't seem like the levels, like, required me to ever really use them for anything. There were never any, like, platforming segments that made me use, like, the Make It Rain ability or whatever. Yeah, like, there was. There was that exactly, really. where uh, you got, you picked up the item for the Make It Rain ability, and then you had to, like, throw it across this big invisible platform that, you, you know. Oh, yeah, I guess. Yeah, or fine. And then there's other times where you got tent missiles that I specifically remember. And there was like large hordes of octolings that you had to kill. Yeah, see, that, that's, that's, that's when you're encouraged to use it. But it looks like this level, like, you need this jetpack to get across stuff or something. Like, especially this ball rolling segment. Because these, these, there's a character that is literally like making trees pop out of the ground. Kind of seems like it's like a, a boss, that's what they do. It looks cool. Looks like content that I'm willing to play. Yeah. And I don't really care to play Octolings in game. I don't know. It's just one I mean, of those just... skins things I don't really care for. Yeah, it's just a skin. Who hard to get that excited? Yep. Unless it's something like adding a new race to World of Warcraft, you know, like like it's a little different. But I doubt it's going to be that much of a shakeup. All right. So overall, Nintendo Direct, give it a star rating. Out of out of some other. I'll possibly give it, quantified. I'll give it 8 out of 8, no hate. Alright, 8 out of 8, no hate. I, I really here. wasn't expecting anything for Splatoon. I feel like, I kind of felt like they'd forgotten about Splatoon. They were doing like the updates like they did for the last one, keeping it fresh or whatever with the new maps and weapons combos, but they're things that we've already seen in the past. Getting all this no. new skin and the expansion is way more than I expected, and so no, I, I I'm yeah. really pleasantly surprised about that. I, I don't. I, I'm, I'm the opposite. I don't see how you could have been surprised by that. Splatoon is like one of their major cash cows now. Like, it doesn't they, feel like it. Like, there's nobody watching it on Twitch. Really? Yeah. Maybe maybe nobody's watching it on Twitch, but I don't think whether people are on Twitch or not watching it is a good indicator of like how, how popular the game is. Like, but where are I, people I, I, playing? Like, how are they playing? I've been. My trying friend to... Leah is constantly playing it. Like, and and she has friends that are going to UNT that are constantly playing it. And she's been she's constantly asking me why I'm not playing it constantly. Um, 
But I know for a fact that she doesn't give a fuck about like Twitch or anything like that. She's just kind of ca casual, casualing it, you know. I, I think that Splatoon is just one of those games. It's a shooter, right? Yeah. Like people are buying like a lot of a lot of like newer, not newer, but like less invested Nintendo, like people that are less invested in Nintendo games, they're picking up a Switch. They're gonna pick up a Splatoon because it's a shooter. It's familiar. Like, and Nintendo knows that. Hmm. Um, so yeah, I, I don't think Splatoon is gonna stop getting support for a long time. Good. But that, that said, I'm still surprised that they're putting emphasis on the single player. I'm pleasantly surprised by that because I think Splatoon's single player is actually really, really underrated. I really like the single player, and I, I agree. I think it is underrated. People are yeah, like, no one talks about it, but like well, they put a lot like of work hidden. into the single player. What? It is hidden. Yeah, like why is it so hidden? It's like you have to jump in a fucking like sewer vent. Mm -hmm. Like it's kind of there on the side. <laughs> yep. But it's just weird because you does they they put so much work into that those levels obviously. Oh yeah. I, I also say... love how you have to like find the levels too. Like they give you yeah. like a big playground to like learn stuff in, and then you have to like look around. I I do appreciate how the the world is laid out in Splatoon. The Call of Cthulhu compels me to play Splatoon. Yeah, dude. I think what I want to do now is uh, go watch a little bit of Full Metal Alchemist and then go to bed. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you can comment on our comments. Well, I, I really want to do more in-depth, like, theming sort of analysis of Full, Full Metal Alchemist next week. So don't okay. comment too much on that. But, yeah, uh, yeah. Probably better to, like, save save it for the end to talk about that kind of stuff. Yep. And we'll be back next week with also more info on Artifact. Oh, yeah. And until then, peace. Peace.